Hello everyone, you're welcome to the Laris Studios. This is another episode of Android Programming. We'll be looking at the Android sliding menu with web view. The collapsible menu with a web view display for each icons in the, in the slider. Uh, in my previous series of tutorials, in my previous tutorial, I have already covered the sliding menu using navigation drawer. No, in detail and here yeah, is another example of the navigation drawer but this time with the web view uh, functionality whereby a click of item of each item from the list view inside the drawer no, will list a particular web page is loaded into the web view of the uh, Android mobile app okay um, I have the um, the drawable uh, resources that I used in this project right on your screen. The blogger, the Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, and um, WordPress, and so on. Okay, uh, we must actually have something working for us. Firstly, let me go to the uh, my development environment to activate that. I'll show you how to go about it. My Android manifest. Um, there must be a permission from for the application to access the internet. So this line must be present. The Android name, Android permission, internet. Um, let's check some of the rest. Uh, the main, the values here. I'm going straight to the, uh, the strings which handles the the text of all the application like right? the text in the application um we declare the resources with the app name sliding menu web view that's for the top bar the settings which is always there by default let's go let's look at the title the titles are facebook intuitive twitter google plus yahoo linkedin blog and wordpress that's the titles being declared in items tag we have the page url where will those uh titles be linked to like attaching a page url to it for facebook twitter google and so on and also the icons holding them the icons that actually depicts what they are what the titles are all about inside the drawable folder let's get to see the activity main xml the default xml of the mobile application okay so as a draw layout this is quite important it's a draw layout not a linear the main content sits at the frame layout with the id frame container and the navigation draw list the list view that supports the navigation draw list this is also important in the application let's check the the list item the list item is a relative layout that actually holds on to those item with a text view with the image view and the text view that describes the, uh, the icons we'll move straight to the Java and a row item that talks with a list item example now the row item as the row item uh, method has three parameters the title the icon and the page URL that's the title the 
picture of the title and the link to where the title ushers to. So this holds them in a variable. This is just like uh, a constructor to the class row item. So it will be passed, the parameters will be passed into the constructors to hold the title, the icon, and the page URL of each list. Now we declare the get title, which is like a get and set method. This returns title. Okay, the set title also. This is setting the title up. We do that for the get icon, the set icon. We get the page URL and also we set the page URL. Very important in the application. Let's look at the custom adapter. The custom adapter extends the base adapter. And the constructor too is being created for the custom adapter, which holds on to the context and they are in generic value row item. It's a list anyway. It's been initialized also with the this keyword. Now a class that reorder holds the image view and the text view. This is actually going to get the view. This is just what is making us get each view for each um, clicks. The position, the comfort view, and the parent. Where is it coming from? Which, which position is he occupying? There's a order which actually is not. Convert the view, it's not for now. So we have to inflate by calling the inflator class and getting the system service with its activity. So the if statement we actually makes the null convertible to the list view XML layout and also the older class we hold the icon and also the title the row item will get the row position of each icon and title and also setting the image resources and the title this returns the convert view at the end of the statement you can go through this uh, just getting the count getting the item and also getting the item id all right moving on now we get to see the web fragment quickly in the in the XML. So how is the web gonna sit? If there is a layout for that, the web view with the ID web is a relative layout layout with an ID web view. So this you know you have to inflate the layout of this fragment with the web fragment XML layout, which I've explained earlier and the, uh, you lo uh, the loading of the web view with the URL will be showed right in my web view fragment. This is slightly elaborate, but it's just precise, one step at a time. You create my web view fragment class in the directory of the sliding web view. There is a progress dialog that communicates at the first click before the web view itself launches. There is an onCreate method that actually calls the layout of the web fragment, pass the bundle, it passes the URL and the web view. It's been attached to the ID, the web view, which is the web layout. 
this line is very important you must set javascript enabled or else the web layout won't be enabled with javascript as a progress which we actually declared earlier over here the progress gets the activity and load so there is a return statement which will be like please wait for a moment that's after the click and trying to load the URL of the web which is being attached to the web view now it said the web view client that's the client that does the the URL uh, the HTTP call and the URL link to display the web to to display the view so on page finished after the end of the web view loading it finishes up and 